China has a plan, and with it, they'll conquer the moon base before the U.S. does. Thanks to its deployment of lunar robots in the past few years, as well as completing a myriad of missions that are of crucial benefit for the exploration of and learning about the moon, it's easy to see how China became the leader in lunar conquest. Landing on the far side of the moon, bringing back lunar samples to Earth, as well as establishing a partnership with Russia only amplifies how fast China's ambitions are growing. And as interesting as all this sounds, this is only a warm-up for what's to come as China intends on establishing a gargantuan lunar base that will allow them to conquer our planet's satellite much faster and with much greater efficiency than the US. This chapter of China's lunar conquest will start off at 2029, which is when China will set a human foot on the moon for the first time ever. 2029 marks the 80th anniversary of the establishment of the People's Republic of China, and it is for this reason that China has decided upon 2029 as the landing year. Now, even though this might seem like an overly ambitious date being so close to today, especially since delays and overestimation is a regular in the sphere of space exploration, 2029 is actually a very realistic timeline. We'll talk about why in detail later. For this mission, China will be using the Long March 10, a heavy lift rocket that is currently under development and its first test flight is scheduled for 2027. The Long March 10 is a regular three-stage rocket standing in at 90 meters, which utilizes three boosters, two side ones and a center core booster with seven engines per unit. This will allow for a payload of up to 27 metric tons, which isn't ideal and we'll explain why shortly. The Long March 10 will be a more conventional counterpart to the now well-known and highly ambitious Long March 9 as it will use YF-100 instead of YF-215 engines, which, albeit less potent and less powerful, are already well proven. This, alongside heaps of other technology that has already been seen, will result in the rocket seeing the light of day and active service considerably faster faster than what would be the case with the Long March 9. Now, those with a sharper eye might recognize quite a bit of similarities between the Long March 10 and the SpaceX Falcon Heavy, and that's because the Chinese rocket has been more than inspired by Elon's rocket. It too will eventually have fully reusable boosters, however unlike the Falcon Heavy, it won't utilize landing legs. Instead, the boosters will be caught similar to how the Starship's booster got caught by the chopstick arms. As for the crew capsule, China will utilize the Mengzhou spacecraft, which is their biggest capsule ever made, clocking in at 26 metric tons. It will house three Taikonauts for a round trip to the moon. The Mengzhou vehicle has already been tested out a couple of times and a couple of years prior, and it will enter service in 2027. Finally, the lunar lander used on the mission will be the Lanyue lander, which will weigh the same as the Mengzhu, and it will allow two Tycho knots to reach the surface of the moon and then launch from it. And this is exactly what's the problem with the Long March 10. Because its payload is only 27 metric tons, the mission will require two rockets, one for the lander and the other one for the crewed spacecraft and they'll meet and dock in lunar orbit. The completion of the mission will mark the second ever country to go to the moon. Now, this mission will be very brief, clocking in at 8 hours at most, which is minuscule compared to the Artemis crewed mission, but it is still impressive. This is especially true when you account for the tools and utilities China is developing parallel. 
We are of course talking about the EVA suit, which is characterized by extremely high mobility and great elasticity, allowing it to be extremely comfortable and practical on the moon's surface. The Chinese lunar rover is also a very impressive vehicle as it has been drastically reduced in size and weight to allow for it to be fitted within the crew lander without issue. And despite being three years late compared to the Artemis program officially, seeing how NASA announced its crewed landing to happen in 2026, it's practically a given that the date will be delayed. NASA is already experiencing issues when it comes down to the rocket that will be used as neither SpaceX nor NASA as neither SpaceX nor NASA have managed to develop a fully reliable way of going to the moon. Everything is still deep into the testing phase. Plus, despite being more advanced in terms of lunar technology when it comes down to the crewed missions, China has already established a greater foothold in terms of sheer exploration. After all, they were the first country that landed and explored the moon's far side and their robot missions have been quite a bit more frequent and more successful than NASA's. This allows China to have a much greater insight of the moon as well as gather much more knowledge of its surface than the West does, which is a huge advantage when talking about establishing a base on it. Heck, Chunga 6 retrieved far side samples this June, which was a monumental checkpoint for lunar exploration for China. And if you want to learn more about that, you could check out this video. Anyhow, this success, which remains the only fully robotized mission that achieved a lunar landing, liftoff and rendezvous in the lunar orbit, means that China could choose a base location that would be harder to tackle than the light side of the moon. And so they've chosen the lunar south pole, which is the best area on the moon, as it is the richest with resources and having a foothold there practically means putting the paw over the whole moon. Prior to the crewed landing, China will launch the Chang'e 7 in 2026, which will carry a rover and two hoppers with it and will land at the Shackleton crater at the south. The rover will use a drill to sample materials from the crater, thus allowing China to acquire even more info on the elements found on the surface. After they are collected, they will be fed to a heater furnace which will then deduce if the samples contain water. Water is especially important on the moon because it has two specific utilities. You can either consume it or split it into oxygen and hydrogen. And having a stable supply of oxygen is great for establishing a base that is suitable for humans as it eliminates all logistical issues of delivering oxygen to the moon. On the other hand, hydrogen is perfect as a fuel source for the spacecraft that will be stationed on the moon as well as providing all kinds of other utilities to the lunar base. Now, once the Chinese acquire adequate info on water deposits on the South Pole, China will prepare for yet another flight in a form of Chang'e 8, which will commence two years later in 2028, which will further explore the local geology. Alongside that, the Chang'e 8 will also bring a 3D printer to the moon, which will use lunar soil to create building blocks, which will then be assembled into basic structures by a working robot. This will be the first ever human construction conducted on the moon, and it will practically allow for crewed missions to come to an already well-prepared area. In fact, Chang'e 8 will be more important than the Long March 10 flight as it will do something that hasn't been done before and is crucial for the future of lunar conquest. It will have started the creation of the lunar base. This lunar base, called the International Lunar Research Station, or ILRS for short, has been planned to be established as a sort of partnership between the Russians and the Chinese. However, most of the weight will be carried by the Chinese, seeing how their much more advancement comes down to lunar technology and space exploration. 
Plus, the Russians have mostly backed off due to their collapsing economy and because of the Ukraine conflict, leaving the Chinese as the primary leader of the project. That said, China is open to other countries joining the project and are mostly recruiting BRICS supporters, such as Pakistan, Belarus, UAE and many others. The ILRS, unlike NASA's lunar station, will be completely automatized and it will utilize a considerably more complex system than NASA would. In fact, the Long March 10 crewed flight will be nothing more but showing the world that China too can bring people to the moon and it won't have any practical significance for the construction of the base. As for the construction itself, the ILRS's construction will be divided by five landings that are all neatly scheduled between 2031 and 2035. The first flight will establish the command center, whereas the second one will establish the research and exploration facility. The third one will establish the in-situ resource utilization technology and the fourth one will verify the general technologies for following explorations. Finally, the fifth flight will establish lunar-based astronomy and Earth observation abilities. That said, the Long March 9 is the key link to the project's success and it will need to be developed to its fullest. The Long March 9 is a complete giant through and through, capable of launching 140 metric tons of payload, which is more than four times that of the Long March 10, into lower orbit and up to 50 tons to the lunar injection orbit. As such, the Long March 9 presents the most potent concept of all the spacecraft intended for space exploration, beating out even the Starship and the SLS. That said, the Long March 9's design that was present since 2011 has been scrapped a couple of years back and has been replaced by a reusable design, which resulted in a major setback for the development cycle, putting the Chinese quite a bit behind the Starship and the SLS realistically. Plus, China has also had a myriad of smaller startup companies that are trying to compete against the Long March 9 and are trying to present their own designs as a new way of thinking, often failing miserably. This is all detrimental to the further development of China's lunar program as instead of uniting forces, the entire space industry of China is competing internally, giving way to NASA and SpaceX to make an even greater gap between them. These problems have been explained in depth in this video, so be sure to check it out.